Now, you mentioned right before when you were talking about repeat customers uh, and how that's mm -hmm. another attractive aspect of, of jewelry. So how LTV and understanding your LTV can you know impact so many different aspects of your business. I know uh, your presentation that you just did with Adrian Morrison was about how to build and sell a million dollar business. Um, so talk a little mm -hmm. bit about the, the LTV mindset and, and what, uh, you know, having a good LTV and having a good understanding of your LTV, how it benefits your business in total. Sure. I mean, I think a couple of years ago with Facebook, you know, anybody could be a, a turn and burn marketer, meaning they're only focusing on getting that first sale. And those first sales, those first customers, they could at the time be wildly profitable. But now marketers are getting, the good ones are getting smart where they're looking at really just sometimes even breaking even on that first sale, knowing that if they build, have a great brand and they do a good job staying in communication with the customer and they deliver a good product, that they'll make way, way more money, you know, over the lifetime of that customer. And so my talk in Bangkok is going to be exactly about lifetime value of a customer and how you can actually use this metric uh, to determine bu uh, budgets for scaling up. You know, if, if, uh, if I'm allocating $5 for customer support, uh, that's part of the lifetime value of a customer, you know, what's this going to look like? We have 10 times the customers. You can break down your but your business and budget with lifetime value. You can also raise venture capital and or sell your business when you know the lifetime value of your entire customer base. Um, and I th actually think that selling your business, is, it's the same thing as raising money. Somebody's making an investment with the hope that it'll be worth more in the future. So if you can show people what the uh, your customer base is worth in the future, then you can get a really good accurate um, visualization uh, on, on how much your company is worth and the future value. And so your key levers when it comes to LTV, uh, it's got to be email, right? It's got to be you know being staying in touch with that customer, making sure that the list is kept warm and that you can dynamically sort of reach out to people. Like talk a little bit about some of the mechanisms of LTV as it relates to, to Shine On specifically. Like is it a matter of keeping track of those purchase dates and, and, and then making sure that you're creating ad segments based on when people bought and waiting a couple months with a new message that might appeal to them? Like what are some actual mechanisms related to jewelry that, that, are, that people can put in place in order to generate higher LTV? I mean, I just break it. I'll give everybody the formula that sort of I use for LTV when I'm there in Bangkok. But the first one is just uh, first one is just getting your average order value up. OK, so I think that's a combination of selling a high margin product. You know, our top seller right now is selling the jewelry for forty nine ninety five with a base cost of nine ninety seven. Uh, and this same person is using a lot of tricks on their Shopify store to get multiple orders, okay? So increasing the AOV, decreasing the cost to acquire. Um, so, you know, the higher margin you have, that that's a lower uh, acquisition cost. Um, but on the ads front, you have to have a remarkable product and a re really a remarkable offer to decrease your acquisition costs to increase LTV. And so we're actually gonna be offering a, uh, this is a little secret. Um, maybe we'll launch it in Bangkok, but uh, we're launching the first Made in America free plus shipping item, uh, which is going to be crazy. The price is going to be so low that sellers can literally give this away and uh, and they can use it for um, building lists and, uh, and, and getting a ton of customers that have a high lifetime value. So I think increase your AOV, decrease your acquisition costs. And then the third would really be yeah, increasing your repeat purchase rate. So good quality product. Um, I feel like we do that. But also there's a lot of opportunities I think people are missing for um, uh, getting the repeat purchase beyond just Facebook Messenger retargeting and retargeting ads. Uh, we actually offer all sellers white labeling where they can they can upload a coupon and we'll put that inside of the box. So, you know, the customer is opening their 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 piece that they ordered for the first time they're all smiles and uh, that's a great time to ask for another order with a discount um, that and uh, catalogs actually we're creating an on-demand catalog service so we're like all bought in on helping people build you know full-fledged brands we're not just about turn and burn 
Um, we're, we're making a heavy investment in all these things because Shopify has an exchange now. You can sell your Shopify store. Um, creating and selling these stores is going to be much more mainstream over the next couple of years. And so we're totally on top of it for everyone. Very cool. Now, you know, one of the things that I'm really interested in as someone who's playing around with Shine On is, is that idea of traction. You know, how, when you, you've built out a brand that you think looks good, you feel you've built out some designs that are really, really top, you know, that, that, are, that are going after a specific audience, you want to spend some